Hello folks, welcome to the Age of Asparagus and part 3.2 of making a 3D top-down shooter in Godot. By the end of this video, we won't be able to cheat anymore by going off the edge of the map. Instead, we'll fall into a black void to our death. We'll also make our character's movement a lot smoother. So let's start by adding some gravity. We'll go to our player script, and I'm going to keep the y-axis velocity logically separate from the x and z, which is the player controlled movement. So let's add a, we'll add a constant gravity value here. And I'm not really sure what it'll be. Let's just set it to something like 10 for now and we can adjust that later. And down here when we move and slide, instead of moving at our velocity, which has an x and a z value, we're going to insert a y value, which we'll call a falling speed. And I'm just going to define that up here. We'll set that to zero to start. So the falling speed each frame will be minus, we'll subtract gravity. So it'll decrement, it'll reduce by 10 every frame. Now the thing is, once we incorporate it, the move and slide method, it's going to our player is going to collide with the floor and it will keep resetting to zero basically because of that collision and it's only when it goes off the edge that gravity will start subtracting and subtracting from the falling speed so if we're going to insert the falling speed instead of going velocity we're going to move and slide by a new vector 3 and we'll use velocity.x for x, but we're going to use the falling speed for y. And then for the z value, we'll again use velocity, the z component. Let's close up that bracket here. Now, okay, let's just see what that does. Um, I can still move around good. We always want to make sure I don't kill the movement. And what happens if I go off the edge now? <laughs> Craziness! Okay. Um, and the reason for that is because falling speed doesn't actually get updated by the move and slide method. We, we insert it, but we don't actually get a result back. So move and slide returns the velocity of the node, the object, of the body, um, after it runs. We're not using it because right now we always just reset the velocity back to zero. We don't have any kind of nice move. But for falling speed, we do want to know what the result is after the move and slide. So Let's just create a new variable called result and we'll set it equal to the move and slide method. And if the player is hitting the ground, then the y component after the move and slide should be zero or close to it anyway. So then what we'll do is we'll set the falling speed equal to the y component of the result. There we go. And now we shouldn't have that craziness happen at least and we we fall down hey it kind of worked is that looked a little harsh uh, left and right is still working Wow well, um, I don't know maybe you like that let's maybe I'll just reduce it down to five yeah I like that that's cool but we also want to die when we fall so let's add a new area to our game and we'll call it void. Let's add a new child node. It's going to be an area. I'm going to call it void. We'll give it a collision shape. And let's make this a, uh, we'll make it a box shape. Let's click on the box shape here and we'll make it, let's make it 50 by 50, like that. So it's going to be nice and big and wide. And then click back on the void here and we'll move the area. We'll move it down. And let's set it to, oh, this is gravity. That's not what we want. <clears throat> let's go to the transform down here. And we'll just set it at, uh, let's say, negative 50. So it's way down there. If we look down, we can go there. We just, I just want it, I'm going to hit 7 to go into top view. Can I see it? Oh, you can barely see it, the blue outline there. I just want it further out in case later on or for some reason players fall off the edge and then they like <laughs> keep pressing over and trying to get past the edge of our void collision. Okay, so we want to be able to detect when the player hits the void. 
So let's go into the node over here and create a body entered signal. And we're going to connect this to the player. So on void body entered, there we go. And it's going to be similar to this here on stats you died signal. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to queue free the player. Uh, but this time we'll type something. It'll be game over. It'll be like, ah! Okay. Uh, let's see how that works. There we go. Ah! Cool. It worked. Okay, um, but this is kind of lame. It, it, if we play our game, it's you're looking down into like this gray, not very scary void. Why don't we make it black? And also, the player, when they fall down, they just kind of disappear at a certain point, right? They're just queue freed as soon as they hit our little void collision box. So let's edit the environment a little bit to make this look a little more fun. Um, if you wanted to, you could create a whole new environment by adding an environment node here, a world environment. Uh, you'd want that to be a child of your of your game and then in the inspector you could add a new environment click on that and you have a bunch of options here but I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna delete that that's in case you were interested in editing your environment in a different way uh, but I'm just gonna use the default environment here if you don't have an environment node in your scene then it's just gonna use this default environment in your project which you can see here has all those same settings. So let's go into background here. And we have a procedural background, which is creating the sky and the ground and kind of this, this different little horizon transition there. I'm going to click on that. And if I go to ground, I'm going to change the bottom color to pitch black, like that. And because in our game, we're basically just looking down, you're not going to see the horizon. Um, that's going to work perfectly. Um, Okay, and so the next thing I want to do is add like a little fog, which we can also do in the default environment. What? Where'd you go, default environment? Oh, got to double click it. Is, okay, let's not background here, but if we go into the fog section, I'm going to enable fog. And there's a few settings here. Um, depth begin and depth end. That's how far, how far away before we start seeing fog. So if you set it really low, you can see things are already starting to look foggy, right? Um, and it has a default of 10. But because if you look at our camera here, our camera's position is on the y-axis, it's 18 away. On the z-axis, it's like 13 away from the origin. So we're like, you know, I don't know, somewhere around 20 or 25 distance. And we don't want to have any fog in our game. So let's make sure the fog doesn't start at least about 20 or 25. So let's go back, double click the environment, and then I'm gonna type in, I'm just gonna type in 30 to be safe there. And now we do want it to be completely fogged out. We want the player to completely disappear, or any object to completely disappear before they are queue freed in our void. So the void is 50 down here, and we're looking, in our game, we're looking out of our camera, which is adding another, you know, 20 or so. So we wanna have the depth to end at around 50 plus 20, so around like 70 or something. And maybe do it a little bit less, I'll do 60, so that the fog fully takes over before the player hits. And let's take a look if we can see that. Pretty neat. <laughs> uh, you notice how he turns like a weird gray color instead of black? That's because this is the color of the fog. And I want the fog to be back too. I want him to actually just like disappear into the fog. Yeah, that's cooler. Let's give one off the side here. Ah! Oh, you couldn't even see it. One more. Come on, come on. Ah! <laughs> cool. You might want to slow that down a little bit or, you know, adjust how far down it is and adjust your fog and stuff. Make it however you like. Um, this one's a little short. So I'm going to tweak our side-to-side -side movement here as well while we have a little extra time. So let's go back up to our, our movement here. I'm going to minimize that here. So currently, we are instantly moving left and right and up and down. 
uh, and there's no real kind of like a little bit of acceleration or deceleration or give so it's it's a little choppy so let's let's tweak that a little bit and to do that I'm gonna separate uh, our velocity which is how fast we're going with our movement direction which is gonna kind of hold the data for which direction what keys we're pressing to move so uh, I'm gonna create a new vector 3 that's move direction and I'm gonna give it a type hint here I might as well give it a type hint to our velocity as well and now instead of having all of these variables as velocity I'm gonna change all these to move direction so this is kind of like our input direction movement direction okay so now every round our speed is gonna add some acceleration each frame so we might as well add this here constant acceleration and we'll give it something like I don't know let's try try five as well see how that goes we can always adjust it okay let's <laughs> let's let's see what that's gonna do we're probably gonna like we're we're oh my gosh we're moving so are we even moving we're not even moving why aren't we moving because we don't even use move direction of course so this velocity here uh, should be move direction normalized move direction times the speed Woo! We're definitely accelerating definitely and I probably fell off the edge <laughs> okay um, so we clearly need a max speed so under our speed we'll create a new variable called max speed and we can set that to something um, 8 maybe just like we had speed before but our current speed is gonna be 0 right we're gonna accelerate from speed zero up to our max speed. And we're gonna be doing this um, at this many sp speeds per frame. Five, that's probably way too high, right? So maybe this should be uh, 0 0.5, or let's try 0 0.1. So it's gonna add 0 0.1 to our speed every time. Uh, we're not actually using max speed yet, but let's just see if we can get an acceleration. That looks better. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, and then if we change, if that was too slow, we could go 0 0.5, and then definitely. And you can see we never reach the max speed; it just keeps going up and up and up, right? So, what we want to do after we accelerate each frame is we're gonna set the speed to be the lesser, the min of speed or max speed. So if the speed is lower, we'll use it, but once we've once speed becomes more than max speed, we're just gonna set it to the max speed, so it'll never go above that. And then this is where you'll be able to start playing around between those two numbers, between um, the acceleration and the max speed. And if I set the max speed a little higher, let's set it to like 20, just so you can really feel it. Uh, that, oh yeah, okay, definitely a difference there. So I'm going to set it back down to 8, and we only currently, so it accelerates nicely, kind of, does it? Well, here, I'm going to make the acceleration really small, and just to show you something here, 0 0.1, small, and we'll set the max speed to 20. So I get up to my max speed. But now I'm at my max speed. It never resets, right? When I stop, it doesn't go back to that initial zero speed. I'm just instantly at my max speed again. So that kind of defeats the purpose. So I'm gonna leave these values extreme just so we can feel them and then we can tweak them later. So we need a way to see if we're m hitting the arrow keys and moving or not moving. So that's pretty easy because we can go if not move direction, Remember, move direction, each frame is going to be reset to an empty vector. And if we're not pressing any buttons, it's going to still be an empty vector, and that's going to be a falsy value here. So if we're not moving, then we can set the speed to zero. Else, we can do all this other fancy stuff. And we'll leave that there. So now, at least we should accelerate slowly and then we stop and then we accelerate so every time we stop we accelerate right okay so that part's working however I don't want to instantly stop when I stop pressing I actually want to decelerate as well 
And I could do the same thing here. I could do subtract the acceleration and then just make sure I don't go below zero. But there's something that's a little nicer here and we don't actually need the speed at all. What we'll do is we'll set our velocity, which remember at this point does not include the vertical axis, the y-axis for gravity. We're, we're keeping that logic separate. So what we can do is that we can set the velocity to itself and with an interpolation to zero using the move toward method. So we're gonna move towards an empty vector three. We're gonna go from our current velocity to no velocity. And here we can give it a delta or a float or a percent change value. And this is where acceleration would make sense. So let's check this out. So I'm speeding up. Uh, oh, I'm getting faster. <laughs> The speed never resets to zero, of course. Um, so let's pull this velocity. Since we're setting the velocity, if we're not moving, the velocity is gonna slow down towards zero. And if we are moving, the velocity is gonna speed up, up to our max speed. There we go. <laughs> so we basically have an ice level here, right? Now, we're still not resetting speed to zero, so that's a problem. Um, so, although this logic uh, visually seems easier to read what's going on, um, maybe let's just simplify the movement logic to use this move toward method as well. So, I'm gonna control K this. And what we can do is we can see that our target velocity is the movement direction normalized times the max speed. And what we want the velocity to do is move towards that. So let's go velocity, velocity, oh my. And then we'll use the move toward method. So we're gonna go from whatever our current velocity is, it might be zero, might be something else, and we're gonna move it towards the maximum velocity in the direction we wanna go. And we're gonna move by our acceleration value. And if that works, hopefully I didn't delete all that stuff prematurely. Let's check that out. <laughs> That's it, yeah, now we get, now you get um, the real sliding on the ice where if you're moving in a direction you try and turn you don't instantly change directions you actually have a little bit of momentum going on here okay oh yeah the momentum is doing a little bit of crazy things here I think you can build it up against a wall here watch this <laughs> cool okay so obviously we don't want a max speed 20 let's set a max speed of 8 and let's not let's be a little quicker on our feet here maybe we can set this to 0.5 for our acceleration and get something that feels a little better Ooh, that's still a little laggy. It's kind of fun though, actually. You might want to play around this to see what you get. I, I think maybe I want acceleration of one. Max speed's probably still good. Oh, it feels way more smooth than we had before. Um, and uh, now we have an easy way to make future ice levels <laughs> or power-ups with increasing our acceleration. I'm dead. 